Ladies and gentlemen, Walmart and McDonald's have just issued a stark warning for the US consumer. They are saying the US consumer has never been in more trouble than they are right now. And unlike all the official economic data coming out, it is a complete lie. They are covering up how bad things are out there in the real economy, covering up how bad inflation is, and they're covering up that we are not just in a recession, but for the consumer, we are in a depression. Now, this story is so wild, I actually had to stand up uh, and get out of my chair to tell you this one. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a very, very important video. We're also going to go over Michael's Burry's latest move and how we can use this to protect against our uh, portfolios protect our wealth, protect our purchasing power for the crisis that will be coming. So everyone, without further ado, let's get straight into the news, the facts, and the data. Well, 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 look at this, everyone. Walmart is laying off and relocating hundreds of corporate workers across the country. And the reason why is what we'll get into in a moment. So look at this. Walmart is the nation's largest private employer with 1.6 million employees, most of whom work at its stores across the country. So this is America's largest employer. And so when they start doing layoffs, we need to think what is, the, what is coming? What do they see coming? And people, it's not good. In addition, some parts of our business, they say, have made changes that will result in a reduction of several hundred uh, campus roles. While the overall numbers are small in percentage, we are focused on supporting each of our associates affected by these changes. While well, people, this is just the beginning and the domino effects are about to fall. Now, look at this next story from Walmart, and this is a very, very worrying sign. Affluent consumers are creating a bubble at Walmart, uh, warns former US CEO Bill Simon. So what we had before, if you were earning 100,000, you know, maybe four or five years ago, you were doing pretty good. Um, you could maybe shop at some of those affluent stores. But now if you're earning $100,000, uh, you're struggling still even on $100,000 uh, for some people that live in, live in expensive cities. Now, obviously, if you're earning $100,000, you're doing a lot better than the uh, average uh, American citizen. But $100,000 salary is what, not like what it used to be. And uh, even people on these higher salaries are starting to feel it uh, now as well. So let's go a bit deeper into this story. Last October on Fast Money, Simon warned bargains were losing their magic because consumers were starting to buckle for the first time in a decade. And people, they've already buckled and they've already been broken. He's called the time applied to lower income consumers now Simon contends high income consumers are going to Walmart that are going to Walmart isn't good news for the broader economy. Because if the higher end consumer isn't doing good, no consumers are doing good. We already know the lower income uh, earners are struggling. If the higher income earners are struggling, well then that should tell you we're in a severe recession, but no, they keep on covering it up in the data. And this is what he says. As long as there's inflation and those tailwinds that come from particularly uh, that, that come particularly from food inflation, more traffic will come to the Walmart store. So Walmart's really <laughs> not too worried about this because uh, all those affluent consumers, well, or should I say the middle class, will be destroyed, and they're all going to shop at these lower, uh, these cheaper stores. Now, McDonald's has come under fire lately because of their huge price hikes. Um, you know. I went to go to McDonald's the other day. It was $10 for a Happy Meal for my son, which was absolutely ridiculous. Not only are things getting more expensive, but the items are getting smaller. Um, I got a triple cheeseburger a couple of weeks ago. I try not to eat there because the food's not good quality as well. And it was the size of what a single cheeseburger used to be. A triple cheeseburger is like, is like this big now. It's ridiculous. So look what they're doing now. McDonald's is in panic because some of these McDonald's prices are getting close to restaurant prices. So McDonald's confirms $5 value meal to lure back low income customers after price hikes. So let's uh, dig a bit deeper everyone. McDonald's has come under fire after some locations were charging as much as $18 for a Big Mac and $7.29 for an Egg McMuffin. Again, these are crazy prices for something that's meant to be cheap, fast, convenient food. 
McDonald's, like its peers, has raised prices by uh, mid to high single digit percentages, I would say much higher than that, over the past year, in response to a rise in cost of eggs and other raw items. It has also high prices in California, where the state imposed a $20 an hour minimum wage for fast food workers. So yes, wages did go up in California, but it's not just that. Everything is getting more and more expensive and the consumer can't afford it anymore. They're having to go home and you know eat tuna and rice or rice and beans. And even rice is getting more expensive. Um, just to survive right now is becoming unbearable for the consumer. Now let's go on to the next part of the story. Global restaurant chains such as McDonald's and Starbucks have seen their lower income customers opting to eat more meals at home amid a cost of living crisis. That's right, everyone. This is a cost of living crisis, no doubt about it. Forcing the companies to offer steeper promotions to attract them in their outlets. Now, some McDonald's customers reported that locations were no longer offering free refills. So they're cutting, uh, they're cutting what they give to the customer every way they can. They call it shrinkflation. So not only prices going up, but the quality and size is going down. McDonald's, which has ha which has a high exposure to low, low, lower income earners. Uh, reported last month that its global sales growth slowed for the fourth straight quarter. So if McDonald's was just meant to be cheap, high volume, high turnover, has had growth slow for four straight quarters. This is signaling not just re recessionary levels, but great depressionary levels. I think it's important to recognize that all income cohorts are seeking value, the EO said on an earnings call. And that's exactly right. So unlike the Federal Reserve saying, inflation is still getting worse. And uh, are they going to do anything about it? Well, we got news from the Federal Reserve. I'll go ahead and move this here so you can see it. No, inflation is gonna stay higher for longer. And uh, they got it wrong. Remember at the start of the year, you know, they were singing and dancing and saying, yep, yeah, uh, you know, we're having disinflation now, inflation's over. Well, they had to swallow their words real quick. So Fed Chair Jerome Powell uh, reiterated uh, Tuesday that inflation is falling more slowly than expected, likely keeping interest rates elevated uh, for an extended period. Now, what they should be doing is they should be lifting interest rates to stop this inflation, but no, they want this inflation because the US government is so heavily indebted. The only way they can handle the debt is to inflate it away. We did not expect this to be a smooth road, but these inflation readings were higher than I think anybody expected. Well, I think I expected it and you all expected it. The average Joe and Janes that go and shop in the stores, Walmart, McDonald's, etc., see the inflation. Uh, what that has told us is that we'll need to be patient and let restrictive policy do its work. While it's obviously not working, and what's insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So everyone, I know what you're thinking. Well, what can we do then? Um, well, Michael Burry has just made uh, a huge bet. So Michael Burry and John Paulson hit the jackpot uh, when they called the housing crash. Now they're betting on gold. We're seeing gold hit new all-time highs uh, every month. And uh, Michael Burry sees some huge value and he probably sees the crisis that is coming and he's betting big on gold. So it says here, Michael Burry, the big uh, short fame, revealed an 8 million wager on gold this week. The renowned investor brought into a trust that owns physical gold bullion and Paul Johnson, who also called the mid-2000 housing crash, continues to bet big on gold. Now, you're probably wondering, well, why should we do that? Well, because what we're in right now, people, is we're in stagflation. We have high inflation, weak economic growth. Now, the US has turned into like China, where they continue to fudge the numbers, continue to fudge the economic data, but when we look at the average person, there is no middle class anymore. There is only the rich oligarchs, the mega wealthy in America now, and then there's just the working poor. It's the way it is. And they are destroying your purchasing power. So for example, if you were earning 50,000 last year, now that 50,000 uh, salary is really only effectively 45,000, while the rich have their assets that go from a million to 1.2 million or 10 million to uh, 11 million. 
and you need to know the game and play it as well and get in on these assets that benefit from inflation instead of ruining your purchasing power. So that's our new segment of the video. And now I wanna talk about today's video sponsor, Rura Gold. So ladies and gentlemen, we're diving into something truly extraordinary that I've never seen before. I'm talking about Rura Gold, that stock ticker symbol NZAUF on the US market. This isn't just another gold company, it's led by a team of executives who have built billion dollar companies in previous bull markets. Names like Oliver Lennox King, Simon Henderson, and Robert Eckford are part of this powerhouse team. But let's set the stage. Commodities like we just talked about with Michael Burry have entered a bull market due to global supply chain shifts and the end of the deflation era of the 2010s. Gold is comfortably trading above 2,300 and silver is nearing $30. These are prime conditions to seize big opportunities and rural gold is poised to be one of the grand prizes. Now let's talk about the people behind rural gold. Robert Eckford, the CEO, left a high paying job to lead this company because he sees the potential to create approximately $700 million in shareholder value. Now that's a massive leap from the current market cap of just 40 million Canadian. So we see the huge opportunity out right now. Now, why such confidence? Well, the South Island of New Zealand where rural gold operates shares the same geological formation as Australia's Victoria region. This region is known for Fosterville mine, uh, which made Eric Sprott a billionaire. Now, Rural Gold is targeting similar high-grade gold deposits with previous drill results showing gold grades 24 times higher than the global average. That's right, 24 times higher than the global average. That's like finding a gold mine on another planet. Now, New Zealand's political landscape is shifting towards being more mining friendly, which could unlock significant opportunities for Rural Gold. The company's properties have the potential to be as valuable as those found in Fosserville or Newfoundland, and this could justify Robert Exford's decision to take a significant pay cut to lead this venture. Now, speaking of successful investors uh, like Eric Sprott and Peter Marone and uh, Oliver Lennox King have already invested in rural gold. Eric Sprott, a self-made billionaire mining investor, Peter Marone, the founder of Yemenar Gold have proven have a proven track record of identifying lucrative opportunities. And if that's not enough, let's talk about Michael Burry, the legendary investor who predicted the 2008 financial crisis and was featured in The Big Short. His latest 13F fine for Psych and Asset Management shows a heavy bet on gold and renewable energy stocks, while exiting positions in tech giants like Amazon and Alphabet. This strategic shift underscores the potential he sees in physical commodities, including gold, with the total market value of Asikon's 13F securities rising from 94.6 million to 103.49 million. It's clear that Michael Burry is positioning for a bullish run in these sectors. Now, it's important to understand the broader context too. Gold stocks have endured a long bear market, making them incredibly undervalued compared to the overall US economy. The HUI index, which tracks gold mining stocks, is at levels last seen in 2005, where gold was just over $500 an ounce. So with gold now above 2,300, that's a lot of cashing up to do and you can get in on this opportunity. So to put it simply, Rural Gold is backed by an experienced team, operates in a geological rich region, and is supported by some of the biggest names in the mining industry. The market conditions are ripe for significant gains and Rural Gold's current market cap presents a unique opportunity with investors like Michael, Michael Burry Betting heavily on gold, this sector is definitely one to watch and I encourage you to do your own research and read more about rural gold. So everyone, what do you think about all of this? Let me know down below. Thanks for watching. You're awesome. I'll see you all in the next video.